Today, we are getting right to the art, the kind of art that is reliable and safe and just super fun. So I hope you'll follow along with me step by step. And this is definitely a good one that you could dive right in right away and paint with me. So here's what you're going to need. I'm working with a five by seven watercolor paper block. I'm using my Art for Joy Sake palette and a couple of brushes. Use your favorites. You do you. So let's get into it. I'm starting with a little bit of peach and my half inch dagger curved side down, press drag and a pretty quick lift. If you're not getting points on those leaves, you're lifting too quickly from the drag. And then I went right in next to that peach and did the same thing two times over with an olive green. And then I went onto the left side with the olive green. And now you can start seeing how I'm completely reshaping this leaf. Now let's look at that again. Press drag and lift is a classic, classic brush stroke. But with a dagger brush, it accomplishes quite a bit more than if you were just using a round. Now, if all you have is a round, you might just need to do two strokes to get what I just did in one. Here's the thing too that you need to keep in mind throughout this entire composition. Let your paint run out. You can notice here that just within the first like six or seven brush strokes, I have a huge variety of texture versus juiciness, and that's because I'm letting the paint run out. Going in with more of an emerald green now, and notice how far down on the brush I am holding. This is pretty classic for me. I love the added control that this type of low grip gives me. Now here's the emerald green, and I'm bumping just up next to that olive green on the right hand side and press drag and lift. Now notice I added a little water to my brush when I went off screen and now I'm picking up a brown to bump up next to that area that was just really kind of dirty water in the middle of my leaf. And again, taking the opportunity using the tip of my dagger to kind of perfectly shape this leaf. Now, don't die here, meaning don't stay on this leaf trying to make it perfect, perfect, perfect shape, okay? Because I know that happens, I do it too, but get in, get out, get it done. I dabbed in a little bit more of that emeraldy green and I'm gonna just let the watercolor take over and not try to blend it perfectly. Now rinse your brush and I'm gonna be grabbing a red of all things and I've got a little bit of that emerald green double dipped onto the tip of my brush. Now, clearly I didn't do a full rinse. I'm a big fan of the magic that a dirty brush can, can give you. And friends, then I went in with a little bit of fluorescent yellow, still had a little bit of red on my brush, came around the other side. Now I'm immediately going into a little bit of green. Now this is a mixed green. Let me explain how I got this mix. So my brush was already dirty with red, fluorescent, yellow, and it looks like even maybe a little bit of peach from earlier on. And all I did was go into the emerald green and add a little brown, and I got this really beautiful kind of forest green. Now at this point, when I'm creating the outline, I don't have a lot of water on my brush. So then I bring in some extra water and start to refine the shape. There's a lot of fun to be had in this type of technique where you're just kind of like, filling in and then dabbing in when the paper's wet and adding more color and just kind of like fussing a little bit on each leaf. It's extremely meditative. But again, don't lay yourself to rest here on any single leaf. Move on rather quickly. Here I'm coming in a rinse brush with a little bit of red and a little bit of a creamy pink. And then I double dipped into an emerald with a dirty brush and did some of that dry brushing then right into the fluorescent yellow. And again, I don't have a lot of water on my brush, but I'm, I'm here for it. And I'm actually now using some of the dampness on the page from previous strokes to blend a little bit. Now I say often, this isn't baking friends. You do not have to mix these colors perfectly. You don't have to mix until thoroughly blended. In fact, if you do, things will get muddy. You can kind of see the beginning of the muddiness there in that middle leaf because I added that darker foresty green and things start blending more and it's getting a little more moody and muted. Moving on to the next leaf. Isn't this fun? Yeah. Now I've got some blue on my brush. I can't say that that brush was perfectly rinsed because there's a little bit of green in there too. And I'm bumping up next to the previous two leaves because they're still wet. That is part of the point here. I call it color bumping. And then notice what I did on the underside of that leaf 
friends, I added a little rinsing and then picked up a little bit of purple on my brush and did one sweep. Now give that brush a good rinse and grab a bright kind of crispy green and not a lot of pigment or paint on the brush and a press drag and lift at a slight curve and then go in right next door. Don't rinse, add a little bit of an emeraldy green and the same stroke press drag and lift to a beautiful point. Now I've got a double dip of that same crispy green and fluorescent yellow. Let's look at that again. And then after I laid down that double dip stroke, I went in again with a dirty brush and picked up a little bit of blue. It was just a little bit of whatever was on my palette that looked interesting and did another press, drag, and lift. Now the name of this piece is Rainbow Leaves, so you know I'm about to bring in another surprising color. So I double dipped with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red and a little bit of uh, like an ivory that's on my palette and created the base shape of that leaf. And of course, I'm color bumping. Oh yeah. Then with a dirty brush, I immediately went into a really intense red and created that big, bold, juicy stroke right down the middle. But because the paper is so wet for me, it gave an instant spread and diffused beautifully. Now, if yours didn't do that, you just wanna maybe add a little bit of water around the edges of the red stroke that you applied and things will start to blend a little better. Just make sure the water that you're adding around that red stroke is clean water. Now, I wanna mention something about the composition overall, and we're just gonna kind of watch some of what we've already painted again to this point. So friends, here's what you need to know. This is a very organic composition. Being that I'm not really thinking about composition. I'm not thinking about balance or symmetry or, you know, three leaves and five leaves, all the things. I'm not. Only thing I am thinking about is just making sure that each leaf that I add to the composition is kind of going in a, a pleasingly different direction than the last leaf or the surrounding leaves did. And that's really it. This is about kind of relaxation. This is about ease. This is about playing with color and also playing with water control. And that's it. Also another thing, and this is a huge thing with watercolor in general, not just painting here today. You've gotta let watercolor do its thing. What do I mean? Get that color on there and let it be for a little bit. There's a lot of factors that will actually continue to move watercolor and the paint on the page. You know, do you have a fan on? Do you have a heater on? Is it humid? Are you painting outside? And actually all of that kind of unknown unpredictability is what can create some of the most magical moments on the page. So I say, let it be. So back to that orange leaf, you're just gonna reshape that. I wanna talk about it again, that red stroke down the middle. If yours isn't spreading like mine, remember, rinse your brush thoroughly this time and add a little water on either side. Okay, moving on. And feel free to rotate your paper as much as needed. Going in here with an upstroke, press drag and lift on either side of an invisible center and then just dab in the middle and you're gonna have a good amount of water on the page. If you don't right now, add a little bit. And then I want you to go in with purple loaded onto a dirty brown brush and let the mixing happen on the page when you add that additional stroke. Now rinse your brush and you're gonna do another double dip with maybe a little red, a little peach, a little yellow, and same idea. Press, drag, and lift on either side of an invisible center and then fill it in as you'd like and then choose a color to add into that wet leaf now, I went with, of course, fluorescent yellow. And of course, keep in mind the color bumping with at least one other leaf. All right, rinse that brush and friends, press, drag, and lift. I've got a double dip of brown and emerald green on here. And I am really using that tip on the second press, drag, and lift. Well, really more so after that second press, drag, and lift to kind of cut in this leaf behind the one that is starting to dry, that kind of bright green and emerald green. So take advantage of all parts of a dagger brush or even all parts of a round brush that has a really nice point. Now I'm bringing in my beloved Remember Joy brush. This is a liner brush and I'm just grabbing a really saturated, so not a lot of water, but a lot of paint 
mixture of a dark green. Do what you love. And I'm going through into some of the damp, some of the wet even, and of course, some of the original leaves are starting to actually be dry. And I'm adding little center veins to them. And I'm using all the same color. And this is just a fun way to easily make a connection throughout an otherwise maybe disconnected composition. Now, this is another thing I love to do when things are still wet. And this is a little more fussy, so that it maybe will seem like I'm kind of going against what I originally said. Positive lifting. Now, you've probably heard of lifting. I've made up a new term, positive lifting, because lifting often refers to kind of correcting a mistake. But positive lifting is lifting to reveal magic underneath reveal layers that are kind of left over from the paint soaking into the paper for a while. Let's look at that moment of lifting again. That big central leaf has red, green, fluorescent yellow. It even has what looks like little remnants of peach. So I'm taking a very clean brush and with not a lot of pressure because it's very damp still, I am scooping up some of the top layers and blotting them off on a paper towel. And then I'm also doing that on the bottom. And it's actually revealing a really kind of cool, mystical kind of kind of smoky gradient that I wouldn't have otherwise seen had I not lifted off that top layer. Now, if you want to know more about some of my quirky titled techniques like positive lifting, I have a video for you below. You're going to want to check it out. We call it Watercolor for X Beginners. All right, friends, now is a good time to take a breath, take a beat, and of course, take a moment to give this video a boop. That's a like, friends, and that was my really, really cheesy transition in hopes that you want to help out my channel because a boop or a like is a really great way to help me tell the algorithm that other people need to see this video. So thanks a lot. And head into comments and let me know if you're painting along or you hope to later. I definitely want to hear about it. Now is the perfect time to grab your favorite round brush. I am using my number six travel round. It's called the Joy Chaser. Here we go. Grab your favorite green. I would double or triple dip, like get crazy. It's time to get crazy. And you're gonna press and lift, press and lift. But notice how I am changing the angle of my brush every time that I lay down a press and lift stroke. All of those stems that I'm adding now with my liner brush are going to connect below or under that green leaf, if you will. Filler needs to have kind of a spray-like effect for it to feel really natural. Here, I'm going to do it again. I'm going in between that like muddy purpley leaf and that bright green leaf, and I'm just doing all stems, but they're all emanating from that kind of intersection point between the two leaves. And now I'll go back and this time I'm using my dagger and I'm going to do kind of a press and swipe, a very short swipe with a double loaded brush. Do the colors you love. You don't have to follow me. It's just another great example of super simple filler, super satisfying filler. But again, the key is that intersection point, really, really important. And now that you have that basic idea of that intersection point down, you can start going crazy with filler that tucks behind and starts to curve. And as long as everything in terms of stems is emanating from one point, you are golden. So have fun with it. Now I'm back to the area where I added the original filler and I'm doing a longer stroke with a number 12 round press, drag and lift. And you're noticing that I'm doing a quicker lift because I'm getting a little bit of like a blunt end on those leaves. Now I'm bringing in the liner brush and Yep, you guessed it. I'm going to emanate those stems and I'm taking some liberties here as you see, but mostly all of the stems of this filler are kind of coming from in between the, the kind of yellowish peachy leaf and that greenish purple leaf. All right, and I'm just going to keep spinning around doing filler. You'll notice that I did some other little filler moments here down in the bottom corner. Similar approaches, similar approaches to what we've already done before. I want you to play though. I want you to take some liberties now that you know the basic kind of tenets of really satisfying, convincing filler. I'm just adding some leaf veins here to that big central leaf that I did the positive lifting on again, with just a dark green of your choice. And notice I'm just starting at the middle vein that we established earlier. Make sure your leaf is dry. It really needs to be dry at this point. 
and I'm following the curve or the silhouette of each side of that leaf. And I'm going to continue on with this type of detailing. It's so satisfying once you kind of get the flow, once your hand feels kind of confident. And in order to get to that point, that confidence, that kind of muscle memory with these type of movements, you might want to try just playing around with your liner brush on a separate piece of paper. Now on this orangey leaf, yes, I've changed the color. I wanted a little bit less contrast, so I'm doing just kind of a darker red. And yep, I'm gonna bring that into some other areas because why not? Again, remember this is like rainbow leaves, oh yeah. And notice now I am full on twisting and turning around this block of watercolor paper. It's all good. You need to paint in a way that you are comfortable, not only emotionally, but also physically. Now I've got that number six round again. Look at the point on that bad boy. And I'm bringing in some brown, press, drag, and lift. And I'm kind of descending in size with the length of my stroke. And really also just filling in that kind of skinny corner. And here comes that liner brush. And I'm connecting them all down in that bottom of the corner that's kind of right underneath that really cool leaf with all the different colors in it. I love dragging a liner brush through just a slightly damp leaf. It creates some of the most cool effects. So while I wouldn't do that through a wet leaf often necessarily, definitely, definitely, definitely do it through a damp leaf. And now I'm just back to adding some of that really fun, relaxing, veins in these bigger leaves with the dark color. Now, if you have all dry leaves at this point and you want some dampness, you want more diffusion and less of this contrast that I'm using, go ahead with a really clean wet brush and re-wet some of your leaves and let them get dried to the point of damp and then go for it. So if you don't like all the contrast that I'm using in some of these leaves with that dark, dark green, you could go ahead and use more of a tone on tone. So again, if your leaf is red, you could go in with a darker red. Or if your leaf is purple, go in with a slightly darker purple. Yeah. So I'm just going around now with my liner brush and just adding little moments that feel really good to me. And I want you to do that for you. And just, you can think about press and lift, press and lift with a liner brush. Here I'm using a number six round again with a purple, just a single loaded purple. And I'm doing kind of a, a drag with very little pressure. And again, notice even those weird looking strokes in the purple are emanating between those two leaves, the orange one and the green one. And then bringing that liner brush right back in with a darker purple, got a little brown mixed in there and dragging it through those marks, those longer marks that I just made. Another beautiful, simple example of filler. I, if you can't tell, if you can't tell, I am a fan of filler. All right, all right. Now, here's another thing we could do, some glazing. I'm going back into that big leaf where I did the positive lifting. I'm going into this orange leaf and I'm adding some sheer color to them. This is a very simple approach to glazing. On that orange leaf, I'm using a little bit of like a opaque pink and I use a little bit of fluorescent watered down on that first big leaf. Love glazing. So play around with that. Just know that glazing traditionally is thinner layers. So for watercolor, that's lots of water, not a lot of paint. Doing a little bit more here on the upper side of this leaf in the middle. You know, it's kind of like my focal point leaf. I'm adding a little bit of purple and just a hint of a really watered down red along the edge there. And I'm getting that beautiful kind of gradient or ombre effect. And if you're not getting the blends that you want at this point when you're adding the glazing, I want you to just rinse your brush really well and add a little bit of clean water over top the area that you want to be blended a little bit more. And you're gonna see that blend happen a lot easier when you add a little bit of clean water. Here's another approach with a triple zero brush. I'm not using continuous lines and the lines are more straight, more angular, and I'm not going all the way to the edge of the leaf with those linear detail lines. It's another great way to finish the detailing of a leaf. I'm gonna show you again here. These lines are interrupted. They almost look like dots and dashes and they're very angular. Doesn't that look so fun? It's a nice contrast to some of the more like 
curvy, whimsical, lyrical lines that I've added to some of the other leaves. You can really start to see this come together. Don't worry, I'm gonna reveal the whole thing, don't worry. And I've still got that triple zero, which I love, and I'm just gonna sketch with her. So underrated, sketching with a teeny tiny brush. I've got a really dark mixture of blue, brown, and green here, and I'm just doing simple teardrop leaves, and I'm even outlining some of the older leaf filler that I added but I love this visual contrast between like a full stroke in a lot of the areas and then adding details with more of a sketched outline look like I'm using my brush as a pencil, so to speak. I just adore it. And it's also super relaxing. Again, notice that grip on my brush. I'm holding it really far down for lots of control. And again, even here, I'm letting the spray of the sketched leaves emanate from between two other leaves. And that's just giving it a really natural vibe. So I want you to play around with this, continue on, and see how adding these sketch details feels to you. Yeah, it's good, right? If you're having fun, friends, please go ahead and give a boop. It really helps out my channel. And I just love having you here. So, you know, even if you don't feel like giving a boop, I'm glad you're here. Now, if I've really got you in the mood for painting leaves, I have a whole playlist. So go check it out and have some more happy painting.